kamala harris faces tough questions on her record on fox news. donald trump gets a chance to win back a voter he lost after january six and responds by describing the attack as a day of love happening very soon. kamala harris takes her campaign back to class after courting black voters tuesday, republican voters wednesday. today's first stop college voters stopping by the university of wisconsin milwaukee with a lot of attention now on these eleven words. my presidency will not be a continuation of joe biden's presidency. harris said that during her first ever interview on fox news that quickly became combative. as for donald trump. He told voters last night, January 6th was a day of love, and he was he was and also that he was only reporting what he had heard about Haitian migrants eating people's pets in Ohio, which they weren't, and defended his mass deportation plan while making his pitch to undecided Latino voters. Seen as Jeff Zeleny is on the trail following Kamala Harris today, following all of this for us in Milwaukee. Jeff, as I mentioned, the first stop to court college voters. What's going to happen today and what's the impact slash fallout from last night? As others was also maybe the was the goal of Donald Trump last night and speak, speaking at a town hall with undecided Latino voters. What happened there? Kate, it was so interesting. I mean, Donald Trump uh, seldom is uh, standing before uh, an audience asking some pretty difficult uh, reaching out to Latino voters, which is what he was trying to do. But Kate, with less than three weeks to go with early voting underway across the country, both of these candidates remained locked in an incredibly tight race. Yeah, it's great to see you, Jeff. Thank you so much, John. All right. So as Politico put it today, since Kamala Harris got in the race, the most persuasive knock on the VP has been that she's too buttoned up and employing a risk averse strategy that hews toward friendly interviewers who loft softballs. After a Fox News sit down, you can forget all that. What it means for voters now today. And we are minutes away from the supposedly best view of the super moon. These are live pictures in Dallas. The government is now using artificial intelligence to fight financial crimes. How it's helped recover $1 billion in check fraud this year alone. And the three charges Fulton County District Attorney Fonnie Willis is asking an appeals court to restore against Donald Trump in the Georgia election subversion case. New this morning, the United States government has announced it's recovered $1 billion worth of check fraud by using artificial intelligence this fiscal year. That's almost triple what was recovered the last fiscal year. Seen as Matt Egan has followed. A billion dollars is a lot. How significant is this? Kate, yeah, I'm told this has been transformative for the federal government in the fight against financial mm -hmm. crime. So about two years ago, that $362 billion is the online payment fraud projections by 2028. And some of that actually is being turbocharged by AI itself. Kamala Harris taking her campaign back to college this morning, courting younger voters in Wisconsin just after she went where she's never been before, a combative sit-down interview with Fox News. And also just as Donald Trump is trying to win over undecided Latino voters, saying at one point, maybe I'll get your vote, but sounds like maybe I won't. And a scathing new report released moments ago recommending a complete overhaul of Secret Service leadership. We have that new reporting ahead for you. And a new round of U.S. airstrikes against an Iran proxy. Why the timing and the method of those strikes is so critical. I'm Kate Baldwin with Sarah Seidner and John Berman. This is CNN News Central. So this morning, police in Argentina are still trying to piece together exactly what happened to Liam Payne, one of the stars of the former pop sensation boy band One Direction. He fell to his death from a hotel balcony overnight. And also new reporting just out this morning, the Department of Homeland Security just hammering the Secret Service and calling for a total overhaul of its leadership now. And also breaking overnight, the U.S. carried out airstrikes against the Houthis in Yemen. On tonight, the United States has carried out new strikes against an Iran-backed proxy group targeting the Houthis in Yemen and striking five underground weapons storage facilities using B-2 stealth bombers. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin saying that the strikes show that the United States can reach its targets, quote, anytime, anywhere. Let's go to CNN's Oren Lieberman. He's at the Pentagon for us. And Oren, what more are you learning about these strikes and the impact? Very clear. The message was, was sent to reach much further uh, outside of Yemen, for sure, as you're highlighting. Great reporting, as always. Thank you so much, Oren. Sarah. All right.
republicans in multiple battleground states are now filing legal challenges that target in part members of the military serving overseas, a move that has democrats pushing back hard now just nineteen days out from election day. the lawsuits have been filed by republicans in pennsylvania, north carolina for quote further verification. republicans say they want to make sure those votes are counted properly. democrats say it's just another way to question the integrity of the election. Here's why this is so important right now. There are roughly 6.5 million eligible American voters right now as one of the Democrats pushing back on this. Demo a Texas inmate is a Texas inmate is set to be executed. Why he is being subpoenaed to testify about his conviction and the latest fight to save his life. And also this is the US is the United States seeing a revolution in cancer treatment? The latest immunotherapy studies and its incredible results giving patients rare form with a rare form of cancer some rare hope.